All right, so I sat for a while when I knew I was doing this and I thought, what are the questions that coaches need to be asking themselves, right? A lot of us, we don't always know the exact question that we need to ask to get better. Um, and so I put together, in my opinion, the questions that you guys need to ask yourselves. Some of them might be obvious, some of them you may have touched on in the past, but hopefully one of these jogs your mind a little bit and makes you think. So um, if you had one hour a day, one hour a day extra to your coaching than you already do. Some of you guys do two hours a day, some do four, some do 10, all right? For you, you have to be thinking about, if I added one hour a day, how much better would my results be? Now that one hour may be watching videos, maybe uh, you know, having lunch meetings with your kids during lunch at school. It may be different things than just saying, I'm gonna be at practice for an extra hour. But if you spent one hour more a day for one year, would your results be better? I guarantee you they would. So think about the time you put in. And it's hard because a lot of us have full-time teaching, coaching, family responsibilities, maybe outside uh, jobs that we do. And it's very difficult to find that time. But if you go down the list of the coaches that are at NXN, I can guarantee you the majority of them, it's what they do. All right, so if you wanna get to that level, if you're sitting here saying, I wanna get to the NXN level, I wanna be there every year, then you gotta put in more time. Just like you would ask your kids to put in more time. Um, what is your why? To me, that's a huge one. Why do you do what you do as a coach? And I ask this question to a lot of coaches and I get a big, wide uh, variety of answers, but you need to really understand why you do it. I know why I do it, right? I love to compete and I'm five foot eight and uh, a little white guy and I'm not the best uh, competitor anymore at 42 years of age, but I love to compete. So I, this is my way of getting out there and you've probably seen it in some of my interviews. I am a highly competitive, very uh, excitable person. I like to get out there and mix it up. Okay, so that's my why, that's why I do it. I wake up in the morning saying, let's go compete. Let's go do something exciting. What is your process? What is it that you do with your kids that kind of develops what it is going on in your day to day? All right, so for me, I had the U USC coach came in and he's standing there talking with me and practice started and we're still talking. He's kind of looking at the kids and he's, he's looking at me and he, he kind of goes, do you need to work with the kids? And I said, no, they know what they're doing. I don't need to be over there. And he said, wow, that's amazing. I said, if, if I don't show up today, exactly what's supposed to happen will, will happen because the kids know the process. At this point, I don't have to babysit them. They know what they need to do. So you need to think about your process, what it is that you do, um, and make sure that everybody's involved in that. Make sure the kids get it, make sure they know it. One of the football coaches that has a first period weightlifting class, they were out at the track and he, he came up, he goes, you know, you had like 50, 60 kids out there and you hadn't come out yet and they were all doing what they were supposed to do. Every single one of them. We were amazed. Our football kids would never do that. Okay, and the reason they do it is because they know and understand their process and they buy into it. So really think about, the, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Think about what your process is. What's your biggest weakness as a coach? We all have them. Uh, you gotta think about some of the things that maybe you don't do well. A weakness for mine is sometimes I can get so macro, I look at the big picture that I don't stop to realize that I'm coaching 14, 15, 16 year old individual children. And so last year I said, okay, I need to take a step back and I'm gonna do my lunch meetings instead of doing the groups, I'm gonna let the kids sign up, come in and sit with me one-on-one -on -one and give them that one-on-one -on -one time that you may not get when there's 110 distance kids in the track team. So think about your weaknesses and think about how you can apply something to make change for that. The best thing you can do. Um, are you developing talent each season? Right, we all get good kids, right? You could, you could take Destiny Collins. Anyone in here could coach Destiny Collins to a state championship. She was that good, okay? How do you take and create an athlete that can compete with Destiny Collins that doesn't have her talent level, okay? So I want you guys to be thinking about how do I go through and find a kid that I'm gonna bring through the process? Because we get talented kids and we get kids that we've developed. And what, part of the reason we've been able to win six uh, girls state championships in a row at Division I in California is because we've got three or four really talented girls and we've got another three or four that we've developed and they fill in those gaps. And the teams that have really talented kids but haven't developed anybody, we always beat them in that four or five spot and we always get the title. Um, this is a big question. And this is one that every single one of us faces. What's the real battle that you need to win? Is it your admin? Is it other coaches on the coaching staff at your high school? Uh, or is, is it parents? I mean, who's sabotaging what you're trying to do? What's, what's keeping your big picture down? A lot of the time, 
it's that. Maybe it's another team in your league. We, we've got to take on Vista Murrieta in track and field. And, you know, some of you guys remember Michael Norman. Um, we scored 40-some-odd points at state in California. There's no divisions in California state. And didn't win the state title because Michael Norman could score 40 pretty much by himself. Um, and so we lost that state title. Okay? Other teams sometimes are in your way. So you've got to figure out how to beat them. Um, but you need to really start to identify what your problems are. Um, who's the one athlete on your campus that you need, that you don't currently have, that you need to go after and get? And how do you find a way to do that? I see a lot of coaches and they say, yeah, you know, it would help if I had those five girls from soccer, but, you know, it's soccer season and there's nothing I can do. You have to figure out who it is that you need, and you've got to find a way to get them. Haley Doris, for me, uh, ran 444 and won the Masters meet as a senior. And she wasn't a very fast freshman, but we laughed about it her senior year uh, with her mom because I sent 21 emails, bordering on the stalker side of things, but I sent 21 emails <laughs> begging, begging her to give it a try. Okay, I sent them to her mom, not to her. Um, but I did everything I could to try to get her out. And eventually she said, well, this guy's crazy, but he really wants me to try it, so I'll come out and, and give it a try. And she came out, and it took her time. But by the, by the time she was a senior, she was the Masters champion, beat Destiny Collins, and ran 444 in the 1600. Um, so you've got to figure out who you need. I challenge you guys to go back to your school and figure out that one soccer kid, that one basketball kid, that one person you need, and try to find a way to get them out. Sometimes you can do it. Um, what do you consider success? I think the big thing that should drive you is what you consider to be success, right? What I consider success might be completely different than what you consider success. For you, it might be we got 40 kids on both sides in the team. Success to you might be the kids were happy at the end of the season. Success might be we won the league championship. But you have to define that success, and everybody that there that, that is in your program has to be on the same page for it. Right? You all have to, because there's years that we've lost the state title that I've been pissed. Just, I'm furious. And the kids are totally happy. We weren't on the same page. Right? So you got to be on the same page. You have to understand what's going on. Um, and you really have to make sure everybody on the, on the page considers the same thing for success.